Okay, so for starters, we've discussed CERN on this channel before. Their weird ritualistic dances. Their symbolic statues. It's said uh, the figure stands within a great circle, a sort of halo, which has flames going out, I mean, the symbols of flames. And this is the, the circle of mass, energy, space, time. I mean, this is the material world. Within this, Shiva dances. He's called Nataraja, the lord of the dance. He has four arms. In the upper right arm, he holds a little drum, which is the drum which summons things into creation. You beat upon this drum, things come into existence. In his left arm, he holds a fire, which is what destroys everything. He both creates and destroys. The blatant talk of opening doors. So what are we looking for? Things like dark matter, dark energy, supersymmetry, uh, quantum black holes, large extra dimensions. But really, we're just pushing the boundaries of human knowledge. This isn't just a bunch of science nerds getting together to figure out how the universe works. That's just what they tell everyone else for public consumption. And they're playing with a machine that is considered the largest machine mankind has ever built. A machine that creates eight Tesla magnetic fields, which they openly say is more than 100,000 times more powerful than the Earth's magnetic field. The Earth's magnetic field, of course, affecting everything on Earth, right down to our pineal glands, but I digress. It's that time again for the annual Bilderberg meeting the top echelon of the world's business, media, and finance groups getting together off the record behind closed doors to discuss their glorious plan for the rest of us peons in the world. And they've just released their list of participants and topics for 2017. And Aaron's right now working on a much more comprehensive breakdown of all of that. But really quick, I just wanted to say, of all the disconcerting people on this year's list, of which there are many this year, they also have CERN Director General Fabiola Giannotti going to Bilderberg this year. We are running the so-called Energy Frontier Accelerator. We are running the most powerful collider ever built by, by humanity. Bilderberg isn't really known for bringing in scientists. I mean, Aaron was telling me that in 1999 they brought in Monsanto CEO Bob Shapiro when one of the main topics to be discussed was genetics and they had some debate about genetically modified foods being released in a global way that year. But overall, the meeting itself, the Bilderberg, the annual Bilderberg meeting, isn't typically known for being a place where science is discussed. So I went back and looked, and I couldn't find it mentioned anywhere that CERN has ever been represented like this at Bilderberg before. And none of the topics this year, which we know are basically boilerplates anyways, but still none of the admitted topics that they claim to be talking about seem in any way to be directly related to CERN. So I went and looked up what CERN's been up to lately, because we know 2015 was the year of light as designated by the UN. They made a huge big deal out of that with a lot of really weird stuff. In 2016, they claimed they ran more particle collisions at higher speeds than the previous three years combined. And they've just now started the LHC back up in April. And they've been really excited for the last couple weeks about the Sesame Light Source finally opening up in Jordan under the auspices of UNESCO. See, there's King Abdul II. So that was just a couple of weeks ago. Sesame, they actually call it Sesame. It stands for Synchrotron Light for Experimental Science and Applications in the Middle East, but it's Sesame, like the magical formula used to open a door in the Alibaba and the Forty Thieves, where they find a hidden treasure that's in a cave sealed by magic. So I'm just saying they don't pick these acronyms at random. And now, whatever CERN has found or discovered or is about to do, they're sending their director general to Bilderberg so they can talk about those things behind closed doors and out of the view of the public. I'm just going to throw this in there that CERN and Bilderberg were both first formed in 1954. And this appears to be the first time they're officially meeting. There are already a lot of deep, dark questions about the true purpose of CERN. And sorry for the pun, but the fact that the director general is going to Bilderberg adds a whole new dimension to both organizations in a way that raises a whole lot more questions than ever before. But the point that I just wanted to make with this quick video is that 
You know, there are people who love CERN and they think it's just the coolest science fair project that mankind has ever deigned to come up with. That's fine. But if the director of CERN is going to Bilderberg, that means it's no longer the harmless, cool, open science, trendy thing that they're doing over there in Switzerland, but something secret that they are not sharing with the rest of the world, with the rest of the public, but yet will affect the whole world the way that Bilderberg's agenda and their meetings always do. So you have to ask yourself, what is it that CERN discovered, or what is it they're about to do, that they're sending their director general for what appears to be the first time ever since both of these entities were formed in 1954 to discuss that off the books, off the record, behind closed doors with the global elite. Just asking. The, uh, what he's really pointing at is the other foot, which is raised. And this means this foot is raised against gravitation and is the symbol of um, spiritual contemplation. The whole thing is there, you see. I mean, the, the world of space and time, matter and energy, the world of um, creation and destruction, uh, the world of psychology, I mean, how do you get out of this? I mean, if you... We don't have anything remotely approaching such a comprehensive symbol, which is both cosmic and psychological and spiritual. I mean,